Welcome back, you guys. I'm so excited to show you around. We're at HAI right now. It's been an incredible event for the last couple days. I'm actually losing my voice, so hopefully I can keep it for this video. But I wanted to give you guys a little tutorial, just a little walk around of the Hill HX50, because I know so many of you guys have been asking about it. I want to show you some uh, details and features, kind of from a pilot's perspective. So not so much an engineer's point of view, but a pilot's perspective. Let's just dive right into it. I'm going to start in the front and just kind of do a walk around as if we were doing, doing a pre-flight almost, and just show you some of the features that I really like. Um, all of the lighting in the helicopter is incredible because it's going to be so bright. So when you're flying at night, you know, you want to have that illumination of especially landing light of where you're coming in from. If you're doing an auto rotation coming in for that landing, to be able to light up the ground at an appropriate amount of time and stuff. So that's a really, really nice thing that I, I really enjoy. The lighting is really a detailed feature of the helicopter. As we come around to the side here, we've got this uh, kind of unique strip lighting that goes all the way along the side on both sides. Um, obviously, it's, it's like the position light, so it's the red on the left, the green on the right. And that really, I think, improves not only the safety of the aircraft, but it's just a, a really neat feature, a neat design. Um, and a lot of people have been talking about glare and so forth, so we've designed it in such a way that when you're inside the helicopter, you're not actually gonna be getting that glare um, inside the, the cabin. So people have been asking about that. So that's kind of a, a neat thing. Looking at the undercarriage, so we have two different options for the undercarriage. We have the fixed skids, which you see here, and then we have the wheeled retractable landing gear. We'll do another review on the differences uh, about that in a little bit, but um, this one, we've got the fixed skid undercarriage. Underneath, we're gonna be having um, hard point mounting uh, positions, so universal mounts underneath the aircraft. Obviously for the cargo hook, that's gonna be something that's gonna be available from the time that the aircraft comes out. Um, but then to be able to um, fasten different things to the helicopter, cameras, pods, spray gear, all that type of thing. So that's gonna be on universal mounts underneath the aircraft, which I think is pretty cool as well. <clears throat> Coming around, we'll get to the doors uh, when we get to the other side but uh, just love the way everything is kind of built into the aircraft. One of the big things that Jason really wanted to focus on was making sure that the aerodynamics of the helicopter um, was incredible throughout the whole thing. So from top to bottom, um, believe it or not, you get about 30% of your drag from the undercarriage and about 30% from the rotor head. So we'll talk about the rotor head in a minute. So the skidded uh, helicopter is gonna go probably about 15 knots slower than the wheeled version. The wheeled version will be cruising at about 140 knots. So the skidded version, unfortunately, will be about 15 knots slower than that. But you know, every feature of the helicopter, uh, from door latches and, and so forth, just really designed with that aerodynamics sort of in mind. Um, coming backwards here, so again, we've got the position lights on the side, lots of light, uh, very bright, and then obviously the detail features with the red and the green on the other side as well. So neat to see that. So um, features uh, that uh, a lot of people have been asking about, how do you get up on the rotor head? So inside of here, this is the, the back bulkhead for uh, the back seats and then the baggage bay in the middle here is where we have our crash resistant fuel bladder tank. So it's a huge fuel tank, it's a 175 gallon fuel tank. So it's absolutely massive. So theoretically, if you wanted to, you could put five hours of fuel in this helicopter, um, which would be, you know, let's say three people in the aircraft, you could go for 700 nautical miles. So really incredible range. If you have a full load of people in there, let's say five people at 200 pounds a piece and some luggage, then that gives you about three hours worth of fuel left over. So really neat to have that. This here, they're still deciding exactly how they're gonna do the steps up. It'll either be in the baggage bay or it'll be right here, but this panel is gonna open up. And so this is where you're gonna be doing the fuel filling. So this will be the, the fuel nozzle right here. And then most likely the steps will be right here as well. To be able to grab on, climb up the steps and then get up onto the deck. Now, a lot of people have been really asking about how do you inspect the helicopter? Because everything is so fared up, obviously, for the aerodynamic purposes, but how do you get up there and actually look at things? Is this the way it's actually gonna be in production? Are you gonna be able to do pre-flights? Of course you are. So um, the donut hub up top, so the round part that you guys see up at the top there, that's gonna open up, and so you're gonna be able to visually inspect everything inside of there. This top panel right here, this is where the uh, main rotor gearbox is and the main rotor drive shaft. So this is gonna actually fold away, so kind of like a clamshell, it'll fold forward and away from the aircraft. And then this one right here, this is actually gonna peel back and away, so it's just gonna be quick release latches um, back and away from the aircraft. And then there's actually this one right here as well, and this will fold open. And so within a couple of uh, minutes, you can get all the latches undone, everything opened up, climb up there onto the deck, and you'll be able to actually walk around on the deck visually inspect all the way from the very top of the rotor head, pitch links and everything, all the way down your drivetrain and pretty much to the very back of the, uh, the tail rotor drive shaft. So really awesome inspection capability for that. And then also a lot of people ask about the blade fold system. So 
Um, the same idea, you're going to get up there, you're going to be able to do the blade fold in that uh, similar manner. If we look at the, the rotor blade right here, we've got two pins on there. It's going to look pretty much like this in production if you're going to get the blade fold kit. So it'll be a, du a double locking mechanism uh, pin. You just unlatch it, they loosen off the pins. One of them stays in, one of them comes out, and then the blade just folds back. There's gonna be a guard that comes out on the tail boom, and so those blades are actually gonna fold into that guard on the tail boom. So that process will probably take you about five minutes or so to do. It's gonna be a pretty quick and, and simple process to do. Um, so it's pretty, pretty neat to have that feature available. So let's look into the baggage bay. This is one of the cool features um, with how big this baggage bay is, really well designed, and so um, if you have a look inside here, tons of room. I could sleep in here if I wanted to. So you can put tons of luggage, um, basically three full-size suitcases with uh, another couple of carry-on suitcases. So really a lot of room, golf bags, skis, yes, skis, snowboards, whatever you guys want, surfboards. If it's a relatively small surfboard, about the same size as skis, um, you'd be able to fit that in here. So really whatever kind of use case you guys want to use it for, there is lots of room for that. So really a neat feature to be able to have that. And again, right inside here is where you're having your fuel bladder. And so this is where your, uh, your fuel tank is gonna be sitting. So um, it's in the strongest part of the aircraft. So structurally, um, the entire helicopter is made out of carbon fiber. So very robust, very strong, creates a, a strong kind of roll cage around you, which is really important from the pilot and passenger's point of view. Uh, but this area right here is kind of the strongest structural part of the helicopter as far as the carbon fiber structure goes. So putting the fuel bladder inside of that is kind of the safest and best place we can put it. Speaking of fuel, by the way, in the nose, underneath the helicopter, so external from the cabin, there's gonna be a small uh, trimmer tank. So it'll be a, a fuel bladder tank as well. And then you're gonna be able, to, it'll, it'll tr automatically transfer fuel from that trimmer tank back to this tank in whichever way it needs to go. And that's the way we deal with uh, huge center of gravity changes. So if you're just in there by yourself, a light pilot, just flying with solo, or you have a full load of people and some luggage and so forth, the, um, the, the helicopter's gonna be able to recognize that and it'll actually trim out that fuel for you um, so that uh, you're never gonna have any issues on center of gravity. Obviously we need to still do our calculations for that. And that's actually gonna be done on the Hill Digital cockpit. So on the screens that I'll show you inside, that'll be something that you can uh, do that weight and balance right there. I'm um, coming back again, aerodynamics. We've got this uh, nice large horizontal stabilizer back here, providing stability, all, all the aerodynamics that we need. Little features like this I love. You know, people look at this and go, whoa, this is kind of interesting. Why, why do we have this feature, uh, you know, kind of away from the airframe? Again, this is to not disrupt the flow along the, the aircraft, along the, the tail boom, because the moment you lose the flow of the air, um, that's when you create a lot of drag. And so we're doing everything we can to uh, reduce the amount of drag on the helicopter so that we can get that 140 knot cruise speed that everybody is, uh, is really wanting to have. Some cool features around the tail here. So this is a linearized ducted fan. A lot of people ask questions about the tail. Is it gonna have enough authority? How's it gonna feel for pedal input and stuff? Things that they've done um, with this ducted fan, they've linearized the input. So it means, um, you know, a, a conventional Fenestron is, uh, is a non-linear input. So it means you need about 70% um, of your pedal input before you really get a lot of authority out of it. Whereas they've linearized this, meaning the same as uh, you'd fly in any other conventional tail rotor, um, the same pedal input that you put, you're gonna get that much authority. The moment you put in 30 or 50% pedal input, you're gonna get that authority immediately out of it. So um, the performance uh, stats that they have uh, calculated at this stage, you can take the helicopter at full gross weight, hovering out of ground effect at 10,000 feet, and you'll still be able to have a wind blowing from any direction at 35 knots. So really incredible tail rotor authority. This is gonna be an amazing tail rotor, lots of authority in there. So people, if anybody's worried about that, that's gonna not be an issue for you. This is a superficial piece right here. So this is kind of the way that they're, uh, they're doing the stinger. Um, possibly they'll still need to add a stinger at the bottom if, uh, if they find that in testing. But really this is uh, designed as a superficial piece. So if you were to bang your tail on an auto rotation or a hard landing or something like that with that tail down, um, this is designed to be crushable and then you'd be able to replace that um, pretty quick and easily. So that's uh, nice. Again, we wrap around to that signature lighting at the back with the tail light, um, tail rotor gearbox. Um, obviously on the other side there, but really a nice cord on these tail rotor blades, again, giving it that authority that it needs. So coming down this side of the helicopter, um, inside here, 
is where the uh, the Hill GT50 turbine engine is. This is the Hill GT50 turbine engine. Yes, it is a proprietary engine to Hill helicopters. They're going through the testing of it now. Really exciting times uh, for that process, but um, a very simplified uh, engine, really a best uh, hits album. So they're taking the best of technologies that have been proven out in the industry and putting it into this um, single stage uh, turbine. We've got a uh, starter generator mounted directly to the engine. So we get rid of the complex gearboxes in between there. Um, so this is the, the powerhouse, the heart of the engine of, of the helicopter. Uh, it puts out 500 shaft horsepower. So that's uh, 400 continuously, 440 horsepower for five minutes, and then 500 horsepower for 30 seconds. So really that's what gives it uh, between the lightweight of the aircraft, the improved aerodynamics of the blade, which we'll talk about a little bit, and then the high uh, uh, performance of the, the 500 horsepower is what gives this helicopter the performance that it really has. Cool feature as well, we've got the baggage bay on both sides. And I think that's a, sort of an important safety feature because if people or passengers are loading um, things into the baggage bay, it just kind of discourages you walking around the back of the helicopter. Uh, so it's nice to be able to have that option from both sides. Um, looking up at the rotor head, we're going to uh, go check the, the rotor system in just a minute here. But um, it's a three-bladed, fully articulated rotor system with a strap pack in there. Um, everything is built into the cuff, and I'll, I'll show you that because we have a rotor system over on the stand there. So it really a, a neat design, but again, it, um, it has that aerodynamic uh, design to it because of the fact that, again, about 30% of your drag comes from that rotor hub. So all the exposed uh, things that are normally up there, pitch links and uh, drag uh, uh, drive links and all the rest of the things that are up there, that is uh, producing about 30% of your drag. By being able to cowl that all in, you improve that uh, drag dramatically and that obviously uh, affects the speed as well. So pretty neat there. Um, coming around to this side, so we'll hop in the back here for just a second. And uh, again, doors, nice and heavy duty, sturdy doors. Uh, you hop inside the helicopter, tons of room. You can just climb on in there. It's one of the things that you notice about the helicopter is it's substantial. It's a it's a big aircraft. Um, you saw me just you know hopping up into there. There will be door uh, like handles here, so you're going to be able to hang on as you're hopping in and out of the helicopter, which I think is definitely going to be a, a good thing for shorter people like me. Um, but being inside the aircraft, you know, you can put uh, three you know good sized males in here, and everybody has enough room and, and they're comfortable. The visibility is incredible. The middle seat, I think, is probably the best seat in the helicopter, um, just because it has the best view kind of all around and so I think people are going to really enjoy that and then as far as leg room goes I mean check this out especially from the back seat you know you can stick your legs uh, almost straight out here and you've got tons of room which is awesome and same thing from this as well so neat uh, neat to be able to have that having the glass up top just gives you that really nice airy feel lots of visibility as you're doing turns and so forth you can be able to see out there and uh, so really nice to have that as well. Um, all the vents built in all around. So the helicopter comes standard with climate control. So not just air conditioning, we've got climate control. So hot or cold air um, is gonna be blowing uh, whatever you choose. And that's gonna be all through the climate control system on the, the display up front there. So <clears throat> need to be able to have that built into the aircraft. So just hop back out. All right. So let's pilot, hop into the pilot seat. This is the most fun part here. Okay, so climbing into the helicopter, what they've done is they've uh, made the cyclic so that you can move it slightly up and down like this. It's not very much. It's kind of a hybrid between um, what we're used to in a Robinson style cyclic and then just a conventional cyclic. So we still have all the same motion and range and everything that you have, but uh, each cyclic has the ability to move up and down a little bit. This helicopter right now, just because it's a trade show demonstrator, it doesn't have the dual controls in, but normally you'd have the dual controls in there. Of, of course, that comes standard on the helicopter. It's actually amazing how many people ask, does the helicopter have dual controls? Yeah, every helicopter has dual controls because you have to be able to do flight training and so forth in it and uh, have the ability to have two pilots if you want to. So definitely has that, but a very co um, conventional type cyclic. Um, there's no fly-by-wire here. It's all, um, it's all flexible push-pull two, uh, tube uh, cables. And um, so conventional, very, very con uh, conventional type controls. The one thing that is slightly different is our collective. And so this is built into the center console. The reason why they did this is for ergonomics. And so now we've got the ability to have in cruise flight, collective is gonna be somewhere around here. So we have the ability to kind of be able to rest your elbow onto the center console here. Um, yes, we do have a center console. You can store things in there. So really neat to be able to have some space just to be able to chuck uh, different things that you want to, as well as your phone. I have a charging point right here. And uh, so that's a place that you can put your phone 
and uh, it'll be charging for you as well. So that's kind of a, a neat thing to have. Um, so the collective, as far as all the features go, um, fairly uh, conventional for what we're used to. We've got a flight idle switch here um, to fly, put the helicopter into flight or idle mode. Um, it is a, a dual FADEX system, so the startup procedure is gonna be very, very simple. We just essentially turn our master on, generator on, avionics on, and then we open this up and we hit the start button. That's basically it. And then the computer takes over, the dual FADEC uh, system takes over, and it'll monitor all your parameters and everything. And it'll be obviously in the idle mode at this point. And then uh, when it gets up to speed and everything's ready to go, you hit flight and now you're ready to go flying. It's really that simple. So this is really the way that, uh, you know, a helicopter of this category should be nowadays. And uh, so it's nice to be able to see that as well. As far as talking about ergonomics go, so the, the seat is movable, so you can move the seat forward and backwards. So depending on, you know, if you're uh, down at four foot 11 or up at six foot four or whatever, we've designed it for a full range of uh, ergonomic uh, size of people so that you're comfortable no matter where you are in any position with the pedals and the collective and cyclic and so forth. So nice to be able to have that. We've got um, two touchscreen glass displays. So this is the Hill digital cockpit. So this is proprietary to Hill. All of the systems of the helicopter, so about 95% of this helicopter is vertically integrated, built in-house by Hill Helicopters. You know, simple things like this glass uh, touchscreen display. Of course, these are just off-the-shelf things, uh, but pretty much, you know, every other part of the helicopter is uh, proprietary and built by Hill. So that's uh, the dual FADEX system, the autopilot. This helicopter comes with a two-axis autopilot standard built into it, and you can upgrade to a four-axis autopilot if you want to. Um, so neat uh, to be able to have that. So we've got the, the dual redundancy system here. Um, everything that the pilot sees, you can duplicate it over on the passenger side, um, as you can see in this uh, situation right now. So if you have a two pilot situation or you're doing flight training or anything like that, or if one of the systems fail because they are redundant from each other, um, this one fails, you can rely on those instruments over there as well. So it's nice to be able to have that. And then we can just hit this button here. And this is more of the, the PFD mode, and so, um, or the, um, the infotainment mode. So we can have di different things like your music playing, um, your phone is connected to there, all the things that you'd like to have, um, you can have that. We have different cameras built into the aircraft on the tail, inside the cabin and underneath the helicopter. And so you can uh, flip to those different camera modes as well. One of the cool things is, you know, when you're coming in for landing, um, you're gonna be able to have a downward facing camera that uh, turns on, kind of goes into the background of the display. And so you'll be able to see kind of almost through this dash right down to the ground to see, you know, if there's anything underneath you as you're coming in for that landing. So that's, that's really nice as well. One thing that uh, a lot of people have been concerned about is that they feel like this dash is really large and it's kind of overwhelming you as far as space goes and you're not gonna be able to see that much. It's amazing when you're in here, um, not only the angle of, uh, of downward uh, visibility that you have, but these are actually much smaller than people think. So in the photos, they actually look quite large, but when you're actually sitting here, uh, my downward angle, I can see right down to my nose right here. I have a chin bubble down here as well. So I have really good visibility all the way down to the ground, obviously out the side as well. We're gonna be making the helicopter um, PIC from the left or the right. So right now it's you know set up obviously comfortably with the, the, the right hand PIC because the collective is built into this. But if you're doing uh, long line operations, utility type work, um, you're gonna be able to have the PIC on the left. And so you're gonna be able to be long lining, having your head hanging out the, uh, the door there. Another way we can interact with the helicopter is with the, uh, the puck in the center here. So we're able to adjust any of the features that we just talked about with the center puck, and then you can just push it down and it'll accept that. So that's pretty cool. So you have the, the wheeled retractable landing gear. This is how you're gonna bring your gear down. Just really basic things like your ELT, the fuel trimmer tank, if you need to be adjusting that. This is our, our IPI right here. Um, so this is how we control things like radio frequency, transponder, barometric pressure, all those types of things so they're right here um, we have different options to be able to do that if you wanted to flip let's say um, you had com one or com two you wanted to flip a frequency you can just push that right there and it'll swap the frequency for you but also right here you can tap onto there and then you can punch in your frequency that you'd like to go to uh, hit confirm and it'll go to that frequency for you you can swap frequencies like that um, you can just tap here if we go over here it's going to give you all your local airports and I can just tap on one of these local airports 
and then it's going to drop down if they have different uh, comms, uh, ground, ATIS, tower, whatever it happens to be. It's going to show you that right there and then you can just go ahead and select that and confirm. So um, pretty neat to be able to have all of that sort of built into there um, as well as, you know, all uh, um, intercoms, crew, isolation, all of those types of things are here. Uh, barometric pressure, um, so you can just go ahead and punch that in and confirm it and then away you go. Um, and that same thing goes for your transponder as well. And so we can just put a simple 1200 in there and confirm that. And again, that's there as well. So also all of our autopilot features are built into here as well. And so if you're gonna have your autopilot on, you can go ahead and select those different modes. So we've got autopilot. And then if it's a two axis autopilot, um, you can do your altitude and your heading, and then it'll do either the altitude or the airspeed. It won't do both. Um, and then you can tap your nav on. If you tap your nav on, it pops up on here. You've got a flight plan on your iPad. So this is just a standard iPad. You can pop it out of here. It has its own power source, uh, own GPS and everything. And so really neat to be able to have that. You can run whatever apps you want for flight, Runway Oz, Runway HD, whatever you like to use. Um, they're all on here and they all slave to the aircraft. So right now there's a flight plan already in here. It's asking me to accept it. So I'm just gonna tap on accept here and then that's gonna take me onto my flight plan. And then if I make any active changes, let's say I wanna change my route there and I say, yeah, okay, I wanna go to there instead then it's gonna actually pop up on here and I have to accept that that change. So really need to be able to have that and it's showing here that it's synced. So right now it's uh, slaving over to the main display and it's synced onto there so I can have my different features for those different things. So really neat to be able to have that uh, system interacting together um, and that's really honestly the best way to do things like your, your navigation and so forth. Um, just talking a little bit about the, the main display here. So uh, I think the most important thing to, the, to talk about with this is that they've tried to simplify everything. When you have a digital cockpit and you can do anything you want with it, you can put multiple instruments into the same um, instrument and you can make it simpler and easier. You can pop information out in a, in, a, in a much better way. So this is our first limit indicator over here and it shows our power wherever it happens to be. A nice big digital readout for that because it's easy for the eye to be able to catch and see. Hey, you know, you can see here at 34% or whatever it happens to be. Um, but then we also have the needle to show that rate change. Rate change is a really important thing, obviously, when you're flying helicopters. So being able to have that needle to show that rate change is really important. Over on this side, we've got the altitude. So it's showing, again, a digital readout of that. And then the needle moves around and shows that altitude. And it kind of sweeps up behind it. It's a neat little feature sweeps up the altitude behind it. So every time you go around, it's gonna be able to show you basically another thousand feet as it goes through that system. So really cool. I'm not gonna take you through all the different things, airspeed and so forth, but uh, really it, it's been designed in such a way that is making the whole process as simple and easy to fly as possible. So um, this is just a quick overview, you guys. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, I hope you got some uh, good information out of it. I'd love to hear you guys' feedback, your comments. If you have any questions, um, just leave them in the comments below and I'm gonna try and answer anything I can. But this has just been a, a very quick, uh, simple overview of the Hill HX50 and I can't wait to start flying this thing and show it off to you guys. It's gonna be a really, really exciting time. We're anticipating first flights by the end of this year, so the end of uh, 2024. So if things continue uh, to progress as planned, um, it'll be exciting to see this thing take off and, and be in the air for the first time this year. So looking forward to that. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Give this uh, video a thumbs up and we'll talk to you guys later.